In today's video, I'm going to tell you the things that you need to look out for when your Porsche has bore scoring. Hi and welcome back to Joe Talks Cars and welcome to another video. In today's video I just wanted to cover some of the things that you should look for when buying a Porsche and the signs to look out for if you have dreaded bore scoring. If you're not a regular viewer of this channel you want to click the link at the top of the screen that will take you to this latest video series where I go through some of the things that I found that my car started to do which ultimately led to where we are now which is the car is now suffering with bore scoring. So it's not an ideal situation, but it is something that's getting fixed. So the car is going in in a month's time to the garage to get a total engine rebuild. So if that's something that you're interested in watching, then please make sure hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Some of these signs may not be as obvious as you think, but I thought I would cover some of the things to look for if you're unsure whether your car has bore scoring, some of the early signs to look out for so you can try to avoid being in a situation like I am. So now I know that this car has bore scoring, I thought I would do a video, walk you around what it's currently doing, so you know that this car does have it, and these are the symptoms it has. So first of all, one of the main things you'll get told with Porsches is that they smoke. Cold start, blue smoke. If you write that on a forum or ask anyone the question about blue smoke on startup, everyone will say it's normal, they're flat engines, all Porsches do it, they smoke. That is what led me to believe that when I started my car up in the morning, that's why I thought, well, it's smoking, but that's normal. So I did ignore that part. I just assumed that was part of it. It is quite a lot of smoke, to be honest. So I'm gonna put a video onto the screen now to show you what it's like on a cold start. <laughs> So as you can see, a lot of blue smoke comes out and honestly, it doesn't really stop until you've got the car warmed and you're probably about a third of a mile down the road, which is really not ideal. You'll notice that it started smoking blue and that quickly changed to white, but there is still a tint of blue in it. And if you to hold your hand behind the exhaust, you will get little specks of carbon appearing on your hand. So it's a really bad sign. As far as I'm aware, Porsches do smoke on startup, but what you're looking for is a cough of blue smoke, not this torrent of blue smoke that keeps coming out the back of it. That's really bad because this car has been doing that probably for a year now. And any time I've been concerned about it and any time I've asked anyone, they've said, it's a flat engine, they all smoke. It's probably because your car's on a hill. Little did I know it's because two of these cylinders have significant ball scoring on them. Before we move on to the next step, I just want to remind everyone that regularly follows this channel. I'm actually doing a Q&A at some point. While the car's off the road I am going to be stuck for content because it's going to be in the garage for three weeks and although I'll be following the journey there is limited amounts that I can do with my other car, my Golf. So I decided I would do a Q&A so just a quick reminder if you haven't already and you've got any questions for me at all pop them in the comment box below make it known to me that it's a question for the Q&A and I'll do my best to answer them in a future video. Right, let's get straight back into this video. So apart from the blue smoke that it kicks out on start pretty much every single time, the other thing you'll get told is that, especially once it reaches these kind of levels of bore scoring, which is significant, you'll start to get a tapping noise. So you'll notice in that first video, there wasn't really any tapping noises, nothing. It just sounds pretty smooth on cold start, apart from all the blue smoke. But they do say once you've warmed it up, giving it a really good drive, and you bring it back out, you should be able to hear some tapping noises from one side. Now I can't remember which side it is, so people are going to go nuts in the comments. I can't remember which side is the noisy one, so we're going to try both, and we're going to try and listen 
to what this sounds like. But let's flip the camera around and we're gonna give it a start and you're gonna try and listen to see what you can hear because I think this may surprise everyone, to be honest. So unless I am totally wrong, it's meant to sound like a tapping noise like that. So let's listen. Can you hear anything? So this is what ball scoring sounds like. There's literally no sound whatsoever. Gonna go under the car now. Yeah, absolutely nothing. So, as you can tell, there is absolutely no tapping noise. Well, not one that I can hear anyway. And actually, when it went into the garage and I spoke to the guys at Straza about it, he was genuinely shocked that there wasn't any tapping noises. He said it was really unusual and if I'm driving the car around a little bit before I take it back, which I am doing, he said, don't be surprised if it starts because there clearly isn't any tapping noises. So that's one thing that everyone tells you to watch out for and this car is not experiencing it. It's very weird. Now, lastly, and the most obvious one and one of the easiest ones to spot is the oil consumption. So when I bought this car back in July, 2020, I didn't actually notice the oil consumption. I drove it around for about two months. It went into the garage for a service. And to be honest, it wasn't actually burning all that much. I did have to top it up after about a month after the service and then maybe a further month after that I did have to top it up again but it wasn't a lot and it was well within tolerance. Fast forward to about June when I took the car up to Scotland for a big road trip. It was at that point I realised that the oil consumption was just wrong. It was guzzling oil and it still is. So that led me to think that there was something else wrong with the car. Now I took it to the garage and then I had a look at the AOS because that is a common part to fail. Don't let anyone fool you that your oil consumption is down to your AOS because you'll find that every single Porsche that has bore scoring will have a new AOS fitted because people assume it's put the AOS, throw the part at the vehicle and it doesn't solve the problem. My AOS is fine, it was replaced last year and when I replaced it last year it had failed. There was oil on every single cylinder and it was smoking like crazy. The AOS did seem to solve that. But because it was only a year old, I knew this wasn't the AOS. So they checked that out and they popped some cameras down the bores. Last thing I just wanted to mention was driving this car. It feels absolutely no different to when I first picked it up. It's had its compression checked. It's not lost any compression. The car drives, it's powerful. It doesn't appear to have lost any power. And it's practically the same car I picked up over a year ago now. So it just goes to show that these symptoms are really, really easy to miss. And apart from the oil consumption, there was nothing really shouting at me that I should have a look at. There was nothing really telling me that this car had anything wrong with it at all. It was just the oil consumption that made me think maybe something's going wrong here. I had a lot of people in the comment section lately saying that I should have got professional advice. I should have taken a professional with me to scope the car out. Well, this channel is all about an honest guy's version. What it's like to own a Porsche Cayman, or any Porsche for that matter. I bought with my heart, like most people do. And let's be honest, most people do not take someone round to scope a car and thoroughly check out before they buy it. They just see the stunning car and think, I'm just gonna buy that. And that's exactly what I did. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you just need to be warned that if you do what I did, and you buy it without really checking it or doing much research, this is where it can end up. It's now going to cost me between five and six thousand pounds to put this car right. Thankfully, I only paid 14 grand for the car, so I believe there is some equity in it. So I will be completing the work, which is absolutely amazing news for everyone on the channel. And I love the car, so I don't really want to get rid of it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's given you a bit of an insight into what to look for when it comes to bore scoring. So if you're concerned that your car might have bore scoring, if it's got any one of those symptoms or lack thereof, then just take it to a garage and get it scoped. But take it to a garage that's got a really, really decent camera and ideally a Porsche specialist or even Porsche just to make sure that they don't misdiagnose it. Bore scoring can cost an absolute fortune and it's worth catching early so you can avoid replacing numerous pistons such like I've got to do. So thank you very much for watching and if you haven't already subscribed, 
hit that subscribe button so you can watch the rebuild process of this car. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.